And look, yep, that's my foot. That's the steering wheel. That's the brake pedal right on my head. Welcome back to the channel. As you can see, I'm sporting my new hairdo, which I like to call the COVID-19 cut. I'm sure a lot of you out there have got similar haircuts or got similar ideas of just chopping it off. Um, in today's video, I want to replace uh, my dipstick. Um, the one currently fitted is leaking and it's chucking out lots of oil. I could, I could have just changed the O-ring, but I've actually ordered a, a brand new um, unit. So I'll be changing that and I'll show you how to do that. But before I get to the dipstick and get to the oily stuff, I'm going to take a look at my steering wheel. So you might remember in my previous video, I mentioned that my horn has stopped working and the paddles on the steering wheel are no longer changing gear. Before the car was rested up um, to have all the engine work done, it was all working fine. So after a bit of research, I kind of tied it, narrowed it down to three possible issues. The first one is it could be the connectors, uh, the, the wiring within the steering wheel itself have uh, just stopped working. So I've bought some contact cleaner. We'll get the steering wheel off today and we'll clean all that up, put it back in. If that doesn't work, there's a connection block which sits on top of the SAM unit, which is in the driver's footwell. I'll try and get to that as well, give that a good clean. If both of those don't work and my steering wheel horn and paddles are no longer work or still not working, I might have to take it to someone who's got STAR, which is the program used to talk into the ECU and into the SAM unit. And I might have to reprogram what's called a TAN code. Um, so the ECU knows it has um, the steering wheel, which has like paddles. I'm hoping it's not that, and that the, connect, uh, the contact cleaner is gonna fix it. So um, yeah, we'll find out in a few minutes time. So if we make a start on that, so if you are going to tackle this job yourself, you're going to need some long arm torque sets. Um, it's quite narrow to get down to the actual Torx bolt and it's a uh, T40 you need. Um, I tried to do it by hand earlier just to loosen it up before filming and I couldn't do it. So in the end I had to use some mole grips, you can see where I've gripped them, to get enough torque on it to loosen that bolt. I've also got some contact cleaner to give all the electrical points a good clean. But before you attempt doing this, the important thing to remember is, let me take you over to it. You need to make sure your battery is disconnected. The reason for that is you don't want the airbag going off in your face as you're playing around with it. If you are tackling this job on your, on your own, make sure you disconnect the battery, I would say a good half an hour or so before attempting to do it. Now my battery's been off overnight so um, hopefully there's no risk of that blowing up in my face. Open the door. Hopefully there's enough light in here but this is where you need to get to and you can see why you need a long thin set. So what we'll do is We'll get the bolt taken out and we'll slowly take off the steering wheel and disconnect all of the relevant connectors. Steering wheel out on my little mate-do bench, which is actually a ladder. Um, and looking at it, I think these are T8. So luckily I've got um, a T8. So we'll try and get this off now and have a look to see what's under it and whether I can get to the connectors inside it. So I've removed the four T8 Torx bolts and voila. So I'm going to get the contact cleaner on it and hope that's the cause of the issue. That's all put back together. Moment of truth, I guess. So let's go in connect the battery and see if that has resolved my horn issue. Oh, let's have a look. So 
So Kian. Oh, the airbag hasn't gone off in my face. That's always a good sign. Let's start the car. Okay, does the horn work? No, it does not. It's unlikely to be the actual steering wheel. So next, I'm gonna to have to get into the smart position and get my head right down into this footwell, just above where the accelerator pedal is. There's a, a fuse box, which is known as the SAM unit. And there's a little connector which sits right above it. It's an absolute pig to get to by the looks of it. And there's a connector there which sometimes fails and needs cleaning. So um, yeah, let's adopt the position. I'll see if I can get the camera up there to show you which one I'm talking about and give it a clean to see if that's the issue. As I am in the footwell, head first. And look, yep, yeah, that's my foot. That's the steering wheel. That's the brake pedal right on my head. So I've lowered the SAM unit, which is this bad boy here. And I don't know if I can... So I'm hoping you can see that little white and black box connector right at the top there. So I need to unclip it and get the contact spray in there and give it a clean. All with using my hands as eyes, because obviously once my arm gets up there, I can't see anything. So uh, wish me luck. I thought it would be good to just to reflect on what I've done, which might have caused the steering wheel to stop working. So myself and Darren, who's helped me with this project throughout, we used his Foxwell OBD um, scan tool to do a relearn on the clutch. And we were playing around with a few of the settings. So I'm wondering if we've inadvertently um, done something which means the SAM unit can no longer talk to the steering wheel, whether it's just a simple on off switch within um, the OBD reader where we can tell it uh, to turn off the steering wheel. So it might be worth getting uh, Darren's Foxwell um, reader again to see if, uh, if, if there's anything within that menu system. If you're watching this and you've had issues like this before, please add to the comments if uh, you think that would work or whether or not I probably need to find someone with Star. And if there's anyone out there who has Star and um, is around the sort of Oxfordshire area and, and wants to meet up after the isolation period to see if we can fix it that way, I'd be very grateful. Again, send me a direct message or comment uh, down below. I'd be very grateful for any support if anyone has that. Um, so I'll drink my coffee, have a few chocolate biscuits, and then get the car raised up on the mini ramps and we'll change that dipstick and hopefully at least get one win today and fix that one. Week. Okay, so the car is secure and it's on its ramps and now it's time to remove the old dipstick. So at the top here, you've got a Torx bolt, which is on the rocker cover to the cylinder head. So we need to remove this and then we need to get under the car. And as you come under, you've got the lower part of the dipstick, which goes into the sump. Now, as you can see on this one, you can see where all the oil has been chucking out where the o-ring had failed and you can see this corrosion on this one as well so i probably could have got a way of salvaging this one and just putting a new o-ring on but for the sake of 20 pounds or whatever the cost was for a new dipstick i thought it makes sense to just replace the whole thing so let's undo this and the top one and get this one out
Okay, so you join me in the car. I'm heading off to go and get some fuel for the car and also some milk and some double cream, apparently. That's what I need to get. So anyway, so I'm heading off um, down the road. This gives me a good opportunity to give the car a run to see if my oil leak um, has been fixed. It, now that I'm driving, the car is driving well in automatic mode. I'm going to switch it over to manual in a minute and see how it goes. I suspect it's still broken because the horn didn't work earlier. So once I get off this roundabout, I'll move it over into manual. So we're in manual. Let's try and go up a gear. Nothing's happening. So let's put it back into auto. We've not fixed it 100%, so we knew the horn wasn't working, but the paddle shifts are not working either. So we're going to have to re-plug in the Foxwell reader to see if we've switched it off. Or I need to find someone with Star. Okay, so I've just got back from taking the car down to the shops and topping it up with some fuel. And I knew straight away that um, things weren't right. When I got the car back, um, the oil leak, which I was hoping to solve with the dipstick, confession time, turns out it wasn't that. So let me show you guys. If I can... So I've just come back from, from the drive. And as you can see, we're right back to square one. So dipstick's been changed and next to it, you can see why I thought it was the dipstick because it's absolutely drenched around there. Um, I actually now believe, I've just cleaned it off, but at the base of this pipe here, it was drenched. So what I suspect is happening is when the car has load going through it, the oil pressure builds up. And I suspect, if I can get something to point at it, I suspect the, oh, get off, the O-ring potentially in here has failed and oil is getting past it perhaps. So my next job at a later date is going to be getting the pipes off which feed the oil cooler to see if that's my cause of the issue. I don't think it's the um, the crank seal because I've checked around the pulleys and it's bone dry around there. Wherever the issue is coming from, it is definitely around this area. Um, if any of you have got any ideas, again, comment below. But my money next is either on a because these are plastic, either it's got a split in there or the O-ring has just failed and it's getting past there. So anyway, so I'm gonna get ready to sign off in a minute. So today's been a bit of a fail really. Um, haven't fixed the horn, <laughs> haven't fixed the paddle shift and the issue which I thought was causing my oil leak turns out not to be that. So, um, but you know, it's best to be honest and these things are going to happen, especially when you've ripped everything apart and put it all back together, things will fail. So we'll get to the bottom of it. Um, again, I'm not disheartened. We'll find the, the cause of this at some point. <laughs> Luckily, we're in lockdown, so I'm not going anywhere anyway. So once the car's cooled down at a later date, I'll whip off the pipes which feed that oil cooler and we'll start taking a look to see if that's what's causing my oil leak. Anyway, thank you for watching. Sorry it's been a bit of a disappointing video. Um, these things happen. Bye-bye.